I've gotten a few requests to make a video about the tools I use when I sew. So I thought that I'd record one of those for you today. And the most important thing for me when I'm sewing is that I have good light because I get eye strain very easily. So I like to sew out here in this room which has a lot of windows and I like to sew during the daylight so that I can see really well. But at night I'll put a couple of lamps out and that'll help. That'll help a lot. This is my sewing machine. It's a Husqvarna Viking Emerald 118. And I've had it about four years and I really love it. It has a lot of very awesome features. It has a switch here which will allow you to adjust the maximum speed. It's called a motor speed control. And it also has a button right here. And if you depress that button, every time you take your pressure off the foot, it'll put the needle in the down position. So in addition to this being a pretty strong machine with a variety of stitches, I really like it. I took a magnet off the side of my refrigerator and I taped it to the side of my sewing machine so that I can attach needles there. I feel like I'm always wanting to or losing hand needles especially. So I keep my needles right on the side of my sewing machine. I'll often have a dog keeping me company. Stuart is keeping me company right now. Hi Stuart. Are you keeping your mama company while she sews? <laughs> there he goes. This background here is my cutting mat. I use it with my rotary cutter. It's double-sided and it's just a nice measuring tool and a good work surface to work on. I don't have a dedicated sewing table so I just use a collapsible table for sewing. I also have a cat out here keeping me company. Although he's going to leave too. There's a lot of different feet that come with a sewing machine and some of the feet that came with my sewing machine I've never used. But these are my favorite and some of these I bought external. So these are ones that came with my sewing machine that I like the most. This is just your standard foot. This is my B foot. Uh, this is for using with leather or slippery fabric. It's got a nylon bottom to it. It's really nice. This is a quarter inch seam allowance foot it's from the needle to the edge is a quarter of an inch. Which is really convenient if you're sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. This is my zipper foot which I can move the zipper foot so that I can have the zipper on either side of the needle with this particular design. Every machining brand is going to have a different zipper foot. These are a couple of external feet that I bought for my machine that I absolutely love. This is my rolled hem foot. I made a lot of videos with this rolled hem foot so far. If you want to check out how that foot is used you can look at those. And then this is my bias tape foot and this one will put a quarter inch bias tape, double fold bias tape on the edge of a piece of fabric and it works really beautifully. So if you're cutting bias tape at home. It just puts it right on there. It's fantastic. I have a magnetic cup for my pins and I bought this at the hardware store and it's designed to hold nails and screws. But what I love about this is it's super strong. I mean there are no pins coming out of here. And then if I drop pins on the floor, here I'll simulate this. If I drop pins on the floor, all I have to do is just kind of wave it around on the floor and it'll pick up all the pins. So, I really love that. This is just awesome. I think I got it at True Value or in the little hardware stores. This is a little tool called an edge guide, I think. I think that's what it's called. And it fits in my sewing machine like this. There's a slot right behind my foot and this thing slides right in. 
And then if I want to follow the edge so that I'm stitching precisely along a distance from the edge of another seam or the edge of the fabric, I can do that using that right there. This is a wonderful tool. If your machine didn't come with one of these, this came with my machine. If your machine didn't come with one of these and you happen to have one of these little holes back here, I highly recommend that you find one of these and get one of these for your machine. This has been invaluable. I use this all the time. I'm a big fan of having plenty of extra bobbins. So I have these little round things that hold the bobbins and they really keep the thread from getting knotted up. And this is the bobbin ring that I have for my normal threads that I use for just basic sewing. And then this is my bobbin ring that I have for my hammock making threads. And I've been marking if it's a different than a Mara 70, I've been marking that just with a piece of tape on the side of the bobbin. That way I keep it straight. So you don't want to load a bobbin with a different weight thread than the needle. So get lots of extra bobbins. That way you don't ever have to take thread off a bobbin. These are my cutting tools. I have a pair of scissors that I have dedicated for using to cut paper. That's this pair. It's just a pair of craft scissors. And then these are my fabric scissors. I'll call these my nice fabric scissors. I don't use these to cut nylon. Nylon is really hard on your scissors, so I keep my nice scissors sharp and I don't cut nylon with those. And then this is my multi-purpose pair of fabric scissors. I use these to cut my nylon. I like these a lot. These are great scissors. It's nice to have scissors with a big comfortable handle. These scissors have a neat little latch where you can keep the scissors closed. So if you use the scissors then you can latch them and it keeps them closed. And this means they're spring-loaded. So if you're doing a lot of cutting and you get hand fatigue, these spring-loaded scissors really make it easy. They just do a lot of cutting without a lot of fatigue in your hands and then they have this little part here that keeps them closed. These are my little tiny thread scissors. I just use these for trimming threads or little tiny things. And I have a rotary cutter. And the rotary cutter gets a lot of use here, especially with this cutting mat. And you can get extra blades for it to come in a little case like this. You want to make sure you keep this sharp or you could really chew up the edge of your fabric. So, a nice rotary cutter. When you use a rotary cutter and you're done, before you set it down, always close that because you could really hurt yourself if you nicked yourself with that blade. This is my magnetic seam guide. I've talked about this in other videos. This is just a great little tool. It's really inexpensive. It has a magnet on the back. And how you use it is you just set it right at your seam allowance on your machine. Whatever your seam allowance you want to be and it'll just stay there. It's a strong magnet, so it's not going to move around on you very easily. This is kind of a neat little kit that I use. These are for making bias tape. So you cut the fabric to the right width, and then you put this at the iron. You can pull the fabric through there, and it'll make the folds for you, make your bias tape. So if you're going to be sewing with a lot of handmade bias tape, this is really worth it. These are really cool. They come in this little kit and they make different size bias tape. I usually just use it for the big one. You've got to have a seam ripper. That way if you have to pick out any threads or put little holes in something you can do that. The seam ripper is very very handy. And Having one and using one is not a sign of weakness in your sewing. I definitely get a seam ripper if you don't already have one. I also find myself using a crochet hook a lot 
for pulling threads through things or cords through things. Having a little crochet hook is often pretty handy. I have a couple of different things I use to measure. I use the grid that's here on my cutting mat. I have a clear plastic measuring board that I often will set on top of the fabric and then cut along it. This is very handy for measuring. I use an old-fashioned yardstick. You can't beat one of these. These are great. Mine has the metric system on one side. Measuring tape is really, really important. And this measuring tape that I have is 10 feet long. It goes to 120 inches, which is really nice. And it's got the metric system on the other side. That's very handy. I use a seam gauge an awful lot. I use a seam gauge every time I sew. Just little bits of measuring, or if you want to make the same consistent measurement over and over again. For example, if you're making a pattern and you want to mark the seam allowance on it, then this is just wonderful. You can get this in the notions aisle of a sewing machine store, but the seam gauge is really great. I also have a little tiny clear measuring stick. This little ruler. It's nice. A little flexible ruler. You can't have too many rulers if you're always measuring, taking precise measurements. This tool is awesome. This is a curved ruler. This is for taking measurements of curved edges. And you can set the ruler down and then just trace out your shape and just keep track of how many times your ruler goes around. This one has eight inches. Every time around is eight inches on this one. And then it marks all the way down to the sixteenth of an inch, which is pretty precise. I mean, that's precise enough for me. So, I love this. I got this from Amazon. It's called the Curve Runner. If you're going to make any patterns with curved edges, then this is very handy. If you're just using circles, you can do math, but if you've got non-circular curved edges, then having one of these is very, very convenient, and it sure beats trying to stand up a measuring tape and measure a curved edge like that. I also have a curved measuring tape like this. I've used this quite a bit. This is really, really handy for actually drawing curves, too. It's a wonderful little measuring tape. It's metric on one side and then inches on the other. And then I have a lot of needles. I have hand sewing needles, different kinds and sizes. I get these little wheels. It helps me keep things coordinated. I've got thick needles here. This little needle threader tool is really, really cool. I have a hard time seeing to thread a needle. So it really helps to have one of these little guys. And then in sewing machine needles, I keep a lot of these at different sizes. I tend to mark the size in the English on the needle package if it doesn't have it marked. Some brands mark the American style needle sizing, but then some brands don't, and then I get confused, so I just mark those with a magic marker. But I've got ballpoint needles, leather needles, denim needles, universal needles, jersey needles, twin needles. Did I mention denim needles? I have more of those. I have a lot of different needles. And you want to change your needles when you're sewing pretty often. If you're doing a big project, then change your needle before you start. If I'm only using my needle for like one little thing and I know I have more life to my needle, I'll tape it to the back of my needle case like this. And then when I want to use this needle again, I can just grab that one off the back, use it a few more times, and then I'll get rid of it. I don't want to waste a needle if I'm only going to use it for like five minutes. I don't want to throw it away, but I also don't want to put it back in here because I want to keep track of the ones that are fresh and then the ones that are used. Oh, here. The most important tool 
though for me when I'm sewing is my pencil and I especially love this pencil this is the Alvin Draftmatic with 0 0.9 millimeter lead and I keep tubey lead in this one and it's just great for sewing because it leaves a nice dark line on the fabric but I can get this pencil to you know just wash off or wear off over time but I just love marking with a pencil I know a lot of people like to use different tools and I have some I have like a little chalk marker I've got a water soluble pen but I really just like using a pencil and the nice thing about a mechanical pencil is it always has a really sharp point if you're going to use a wooden pencil just make sure you keep a nice sharp point on those and I use wooden pencils a lot don't get me wrong I just love this pencil and I want to be buried with this pencil I just love this pencil well, these are the tools I use pretty much 95 percent of the time I'm using these tools when I'm sewing yes have something that you use that you think is really nifty then I'd really like to see what that is thanks for watching I have dueling pets here keeping me company while I'm sewing here today I have Farley the cat and then I have Stuart the dog Farley's looking at Stuart but Stuart is looking off into the distance.